In 2011, Libya had the highest living standard in Africa and the Libyan Central Bank was 100% state-owned. Colonel Gaddafi had been advocating for the creation of a new pan-African currency that would rival the dollar and the euro and even called upon some African nations to join in the alliance. In March 2011, a UN resolution allowed a multi-nation coalition led by NATO to commence a military intervention in Libya. The official reason for the invasion was the threat posed to civilian life during the Libyan civil war and Gaddafi's violent crackdown against protesters. However, critics have argued that Western powers had economic and political interest in ensuring a favourable outcome in Libya. For example, an email sent to Hillary Clinton by unofficial advisor Sidney Blumenthal revealed by WikiLeaks stated that the reason Nicolas Sarkozy had involved France in attacking Libya was in fear of Gaddafi providing Francophone African countries with an alternative to the franc, as well as, amongst other reasons, a desire to gain a greater share of Libyan oil production. The Ghost Army was a top-secret US Army tactical deception unit tasked with the mission of deceiving German forces during World War II. The unit was comprised of artists, actors, set designers, architects and engineers, many recruited from art school and advertising agencies. Their job was to use their creativity to mislead and confuse the Germans by various methods, including using inflatable tanks, a technique created by the British, and staging travelling roadshows in which they would use trucks equipped with speakers to recreate the sounds of an army, as well as creating fake radio transmissions that would be played out by the actors within the unit. The 1,100-man unit executed an impressive total of 20 deception campaigns between 19 and 1945, skillfully deceiving the Germans into believing that there was a formidable force of 30,000 men present in various areas on multiple occasions. This strategy diverted the attention of the Germans away from locations where larger military units were actually situated. The Ghost Army was kept secret until 1996, and in February 2022, Ghost soldiers were finally awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. Crazy facts about dictators. In 1988, Colonel Gaddafi smashed through the gates of a prison using a bulldozer to free 400 prisoners. According to United Press International, Gaddafi announced on a national broadcast that he vowed to batter down the prison gates and turn prisoners loose, some of which had even plotted to assassinate him. While standing on the bulldozer, Gaddafi told the crowd, Today is the day of freedom, the day on which chains should be destroyed and prisons and walls should be demolished. Gaddafi stated that in his view, the prisoners who tried to assassinate him were not traitors, and the charge against them is lack of knowledge and not treason. In 1977, after the United Kingdom stopped diplomatic relations with Uganda following Idi Amin's brutal and chaotic rule, Amin declared that he had defeated the British and gave himself the title CBE, Conqueror of the British Empire. In 1962, a 69-year-old Chairman Mao started a sexual relationship with a 14-year-old girl. After the girl told her parents of the abuse, her father wrote an angry letter to Mao. The letter was later returned by a postal worker who warned the girl's father that if Mao received the letter, he might be sentenced to death. Crazy facts about dictators. After the failure of the Gulf War, Saddam Hussein reportedly feared that his position as the president of Iraq was unstable. To reassert his dominance over his government, he told between 14 to 18 senior officers, generals and military leaders that they would receive medals for their efforts in the war. However, when they arrived in Baghdad to receive their medals, the men were executed by hanging. When the Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu visited the Queen of England in 1978, his company was so loathsome that the Queen labelled him that frightful little man. The day after a royal banquet, whilst walking her dogs, after spotting Ceausescu and his wife walking towards her in the gardens of Buckingham Palace, the Queen hid in a bush to avoid them. Chairman Mao's personal physician stated in his memoirs that Mao infected several women with venereal diseases, going on to say that for the women, the illness transmitted by Mao was a badge of honour and testimony to their close relations with the chairman. Crazy facts about dictators. According to Business Insider, Kim Jong-un's North Korean government recently imprisoned an entire family, including a two-year-old child. Following the discovery of their religious practices and possession of a Bible, the family was sentenced to life in prison. In 1958, Mao Zedong ordered the people of China kill sparrows because they ate too much grain, which he believed was affecting the economic development of his country. As sparrows also eat insects, as the sparrow population decreased, it caused a locust epidemic that ravaged crops, which was a contributing factor that led to a famine that caused the deaths of 45 million people. Colonel Gaddafi commissioned the production of a car that he had a hand in designing, which was unveiled in 1999, known as the Libyan Rocket. Libya claimed that it was the world's safest car and could run 100 miles on a flat tyre. It also boasted a pointed front, which was supposedly designed so that during a head-on collision, the car would slide past the oncoming vehicle. However, that safety feature would only work if the car was in a head-on collision with another Libyan rocket. 
Crazy facts about dictators. When Saddam Hussein's psychotic son Uday Hussein was the head of the Iraqi Olympic and Football Committee, there were allegations that he ordered the torture of multiple Iraqi sportsmen. According to Time magazine, in 2003, after the invasion of Iraq, a medieval-style torture device known as an Iron Maiden was found 20 yards away from the Iraqi Football Association building. The device was seven foot tall with a spike-covered interior. The spikes were reported when examined to look as if they had been worn away from use. At the 1988 Arab Leaders Summit in Algiers, Colonel Gaddafi Gaddafi wore a white glove to avoid touching the blood-stained hands of other Arab leaders. He also placed a white sheet over his body whilst King Hussein of Jordan made a speech. Later, when delivering his own speech, he labelled his fellow attendees as imperialist lackeys. In Kim Il-sung's final years, he made it against the law to take photos of public gatherings that he attended due to his embarrassment of a tumour that had grown on his neck. He would only allow reporters and photographers to take pictures of him from his left side, although photographs were taken of him whilst visiting other countries, showing the baseball-sized growth. The crazy and bizarre life of Saddam Hussein's mistress. When Saddam Hussein found out that Parasola Lamsos, who was one of his past lovers that he had met whilst in Beirut as a young man, had moved to Iraq with her rich Iraqi husband and children, he decided he wanted to rekindle their romance. He did this by arresting her husband, throwing him in prison, confiscating all of his assets and forcing Lamsos via a lawyer to divorce him and convert from Christianity to Islam, to which she agreed. He then found her a second husband and ordered her to marry him in a sham marriage that under his orders was not to be consummated. He then gave Parasola a job as a private secretary to the Brazilian ambassador in Iraq, but ordered her to spy on him. Saddam and Parasola then proceeded to have a two-year affair. In 1974, Parasola fell pregnant with a child, however, it was not Saddam's. The sham marriage had, against Saddam's wishes, been consummated, and Parasola ran away to Greece, although many years later, she would eventually become Saddam's mistress once again. Six days after Saddam Hussein became the president of Iraq, he organized an emergency meeting of Ba'ath Party members on July the 22nd, 1979. Whilst puffing on a cigar, he gave a speech announcing that he had discovered a conspiracy against him between Iraqi and Syrian Ba'ath Party members, saying, The dreams of the conspirators are many, but be assured, I will pick up my gun and fight till the end. Shortly after, the visibly terrified ringleader of the plot, Mui Abdak Hussein Mashadi, was brought before the conference. Bearing the signs of recent torture, he proceeded to explain the details of the conspiracy, and announced that his fellow conspirators were in the audience. Their names were then read aloud one by one. Saddam's guards then dragged the men out of the hall to be executed. The remaining members of the audience began chanting an allegiance to Saddam in fear of their lives as Saddam watched from the stage puffing on his cigar. After the 68 men's names were announced, they were tried and 22 were found guilty. The men who were spared were given weapons and directed to execute their comrades. This serial killer known as Dr. Satan may have killed up to 60 people during World War II. Dr. Marcel Petio claimed to be able to help people trying to escape German-occupied France by smuggling them to Argentina using an underground network for the price of 25,000 francs. But after his accomplices brought the victims to him, Petio would inform them that Argentina had a strict protocol against disease and then, pretending to administer a vaccination, he would inject them with cyanide before stealing their valuables, disposing of their bodies and taking their money. Eventually, the Gestapo found out about Petio's organization and sent a man to infiltrate the network. However, after he disappeared, they arrested Petio and his accomplices. The men were tortured for confessions, but as the smuggler's network never actually existed, there were no names to give and no proof to convict the doctor, who was then released. Then, in 1944, a neighbour complaining of a bad smell and smoke coming from Petio's home led police to discover charred human remains in the doctor's basement. After evading capture for seven months, Petio was eventually caught, charged with 27 murders and executed in 1946. What happened to homosexuals in Nazi Germany? Homosexuality had been illegal in Germany under paragraph 175 of the German Criminal Code since the late 19th century. However, in 1933, after Hitler came to power, the Nazis carried out a campaign against homosexuals with much harsher enforcement, as they considered the elimination of homosexuals in Germany as one of the party's main priorities. A series of arrests were made on the basis of denunciations by other citizens and information gathered during the interrogation of other suspects. Between 1933 and 1945, around 100 100,000 men were arrested and 53,000 convicted. Most were sent to prison, but around 5 to 6,000 were sent to concentration camps and made to wear pink triangles on their uniforms as an identification of their crimes. They faced prejudice even amongst the other prisoners and were subjected to beatings, experimentation and torture. Some were even castrated or sent to euthanization centers. Crazy facts about dictators. In 2009, according to a state-owned North Korean newspaper, an unnamed French fashion expert declared that Kim Jong-il had become a worldwide style icon and his fashion sensibilities had become famous the world over. The paper stated that the grey suit worn by the dictator had set the fashion world on fire, saying that the image of the great general, who is always wearing the modest suit while working, leaves a deep impression on the people's mind in the world. To sum it up, that is because his image as a great man is so outstanding. 
After the Nazis invaded Poland in 1939, the Polish resistance wanted to learn more about how the mysterious new German prison camps that had been set up throughout the country were being run. And so, in 1940, to help gather more information, a Polish resistance fighter named Witold Pileski was given the opportunity to volunteer to infiltrate a camp that was of particular interest, a camp named Auschwitz. Whilst using the identity documents of Thomas Serafinski, a man who had mistakenly been assumed to be dead, Pileski allowed himself to be arrested by the Nazis before he was sent to Auschwitz. Whilst in the camps, he organized an underground resistance that smuggled information out of the camps as well as smuggling medication and food inside. Over the course of the next two years, Pileski witnessed Auschwitz turn from a prison camp into an extermination center and managed to smuggle information about the mass killings out of the camp on a regular basis. In 1943, with the Nazis hot on the trail of the underground resistance, Pileski managed to escape the camps by overpowering a guard, cutting the alarms and using a duplicate key. He compiled a full report of his time in the camps, but sadly nothing was done about the information he provided.